In this topic, I will explain more about um, unit processor scheduling policies. So the methods that will be explained um, in this section is um, all short-term scheduling. So short-term scheduling, as I have explained earlier on, um, is a decision of which available process that will be executed next by the processor. So um, the schedule is um, done by the operating system. So um, we will discuss the policies um, in different um, selection function, uh, which is whether it is preemptive or non-preemptive. So first, I will explain about the non-preemptive method. So for a non-preemptive method, um, once a process is running, so it will continue to execute um, the process until the process terminate itself or blocks itself, meaning it is not interrupted by the operating system. So there are two um, policies which falls under non-preemptive approach, uh, which is first come first serve policy and also um, shortest process next policy. So in first come first serve, um, it is a non-preemptive method which is um, a way of saying uh, first in, first out of FIFO. Uh, what this means is um, the process uh, that arrives first and has spent the most amount of waiting will be the one to be executed by the processor next. So um, to discuss about the implementation of the first, first come first serve policy, so we look at um, the example here where we have uh, five processes okay which is process a process b process c process d and process e and also um, this is the arrival time for each of the process okay so now this is the service time needed for each of the process to complete its operation meaning process a will arrive at time zero and it needs three um, clock cycle uh, or tr uh, three service time okay, to complete its operation. So looking at the execution pattern here, so first uh, we will try to map um, or schedule uh, the five processes into the, um, the time slot here. So looking, if we look at the execution pattern here, so process A uh, because it arrived first, so it will start at time slot zero. So since first come first serve is non preemptive, so process A will execute until um, it finishes its execution. So process A um, requires three, three clock cycle of service time. So process A uh, will execute until it ceases to execute, even though at time 2 so 0 1 2 at time 2 B has arrived okay so process B arrives at time slot 2 but it cannot preempt process A so it must wait for process A to terminate which process A terminates at time slot 3 so once process A terminates at time slot 3 so because um, the only uh, process that has arrived is process B and process B also has been waiting longer than any other process so process B will be selected for running okay so now process B continues after process A and the service time for process B is 6 so we draw 6 here okay B will allocate it for 6 time slots okay so the pattern continues okay so uh, basically process b will execute um, until it terminates even though process c arrives at time four but because this is non preemptive method so you cannot preempt process uh, process c cannot preempt process b process b need to continue its operation so process c d and e all arrive uh, while process b is executing so, right. So basically, um, at the time process B terminate, C is waiting for five time slots. Okay. 
So uh, D is waiting for three time slot, three time steps, and process E for one time step. But you just continue its operation uh, by applying the selection function. So the next process to be selected is process C. Okay, so C here, uh, uh, the service time is four. So we continue with C with four time slots, and then the pattern continues with process D. So D with five time slot, and lastly, runs we runs. I mean the CPU runs process E. Okay. So now all process are serviced by the CPU. So now let us look at the finish time. So process A finish at time three here. Process B finishes at time. Time 9, process C finish at time 13, process D finish at time 18, and process E finishes at time 20. Okay, so now we already get the finish time or the completion time of each of the process. Now let's look at another another um, not preemptive method, which is the shortest process next method. In the shortest process next um, method. So it is a policy characterized by the um, shortest overall expected execution time. So a process um, that has shortest overall expected execution time will be selected next by the CPU. So given the same example here, so if you look um, in the example, so basically at time slot zero, a is the only process in the system so by default it has the um, it uh, process a has the um, lowest or shortest expected execution time okay so now um, so basically the a will be executed by the cpu until its completion now at time 2, at time slot 2, it seems like process B has arrived. But, because it is an, a non-preemptive approach, so process B need to wait for A to finish at time slot 3. So, exactly the scenario with process A earlier, B is the only ready process in the system. At time 3, when, when uh, process A has uh, finishes, uh, process C, D and E has not arrived yet So basically uh, Process B is the only ready, is the only ready process in the system So process B will has the shortest expected execution time So the operation, the CPU operation will resume with process B Even though at time 4 Process C has arrived But because um, this is a non preemptive method so basically, we cannot preempt uh, process B out of the CPU. So process B will complete its operation with six time slot because the service time is six. Now, when process B finish, so basically all of the process, the remaining process has arrived. Okay. So once B terminates at time step 9, so process C, D and E are all now waiting. So now what we have to do is we need to compare the expected execution time between process C, D and E. So this is the expected execution time that we have to compare. So if we compare between the service time of C, D and E, so we need to choose the process which has the shortest expected service time so basically we need to, to reorder so 
uh, process E has the shortest service time followed by process C and lastly process D. Now what we do is uh, the operating system will then apply the selecting function again and it will list to process E executing. So process E will be oh sorry um, I need to erase this okay so process E starts at time slot 9 followed by process C and lastly process D so what are the finish time for all of the process so process A finish at time 3 process B finishes at time 9 Process C finish at time 15. Process E finishes at, sorry, process D finishes at time 20. While process E finishes at time 11. Right? So, that's the, um, that's the um, answer and how... Uh, shortest process next is done in a uh, uni processor scheduling.